Today we're going to be taking a look at the mission Corvus System Reconnaissance. Now this is a mission that becomes available once you reach license level 4, I believe. And uh, it's part of the game Vendetta Online, a massively multiplayer online role-playing game slash first-person space shooter. The reason this mission is so notorious is that it sends a lot of after you, but it also is that you need the pass in order to get access to the super light. And if you don't know what the super light is, just take a look on the main website at the race stat top times. You'll know what the super light is. It's the most maneuverable ship in Vendetta Online, therefore, it's also the best race ship. It's also a decent fighter, especially in one on one. Uh, but first you have to get through this mission, and it took me a long time to figure out how to do this. Uh, it, it was uh, many hours spent in uh, frustration and getting exploded repeatedly. So I'm hoping to help you avoid some of that tutorial. Um, first sector you get sent to, you don't really have to do anything. Fix the sector for you. Uh, the sector with asteroids, as you can see. And if you check your mission update, it says that they uh, stay here for four minutes. So all we have to do is remain in the sector for four minutes, fly around some, and avoid getting caught up by the event. Um, so while we do that, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the setup I'm using. Vendetta Online is a very versatile game. It's uh, multi-platform. It's available on Linux, Mac, PC, and also on Android tablets. And I'm playing this using a Toshiba laptop. And uh, if the HUD looks a little different, that's because I'm using uh, a couple plugins and a skin. The skin is called Light Screen Skin by Lord Spidey, and it's available on the VO Wiki website. The UI is entirely skinnable, and uh, that just means different graphical elements on the heads-up display are often edited by certain players to make it look different. And, uh, I like this skin, so it got kind of a Tron feeling to it which is pretty cool. The plugins I'm using uh, are multi-aim and targetless. Targetless uh, most prominently takes the sector list which is available by pressing the U key. It tells you what kind of bots there are in the system and it displays it on the uh, top right hand part of the screen just below the um, target info. What the other plugin does, multi-aim, is you can see there's targeting reticules and that is because I have two different types of uh, weapons equipped and each weapon has a different velocity. So what the targeting reticule does is calculate the uh, optimum trajectory your weapons fire would have to take in order to hit the target. Now. Obviously, if you're using two different uh, weapons that uh, don't have the same velocity, that's going to mean you need to aim in uh, two different places in order to hit the target. So, what, uh, depending on what weapon you're firing with. So, multi-aim paints a different targeting reticule for each weapon that you're using. And uh, that comes in handy as well. The setup I'm using to pass this mission is a Corvus Vulturius. Vulturius, uh, often known as the Corvault, is nice because it has a slightly better um, sub-turbo top speed, slightly better maneuvering speed. You can get up to 75 meters per second without using turbo. And that gives you a little uh, more leeway when uh, you're going to use this technique I'm about to show you in the next sector to defeat these bots. Uh, the weapons I'm using are uh, 
a uh, railgun Mark II and an Axia Accelerated Positron Blaster. AAP, you can buy at any Axia station once you have sufficient levels. The Railgun Mark II is available once you hit 25 PKs. And uh, you'll see why uh, I like to equip the Railgun on this mission. Okay, so here we go. It's another sector with asteroids. And let's see. Uh, we have to stay in this sector for six minutes. Um, yeah, so I'm actually casting from Chicago. I caught a flight up here early yesterday, all the way from Fort Lauderdale. And uh, it's my first time back in the Windy City since uh, college, I guess. That was in 2004, but um, it's pretty cool to be back here. Um, I love Chicago. It's a great city. A lot to do. Lots of good shows. Lots of good food. Um, and uh, I'm actually at the uh, at this resort uh, about 30 miles west of Chicago for a trade show. And I've got a little bit of downtime, so I figured I'd take a break and make this video to uh, help out uh, some of you new players passing this mission. So this time we have to kill two bots, kill two of these guys and up their scrap. Now the method I recommend using is just a slow sideways straight. And uh, if you've seen a, a sine wave, you know what a sine wave looks like, you can kind of use that pattern strafe. Just go up and down and to the side. And what this does is it keeps the bots kind of bunched together. You need to remember to aim blue or in there. It keeps the bots bunched together. And that way they don't overwhelm you and spread up. And this is really what took me the longest to figure out that you had to do was to use this pattern in order to so you can see I'm pretty much just focusing on uh, one bot here, this guy, that we have target. And I'm just slowly wheedling him down. Getting a little bit of lag here. A little bit of lag. Let's see, that's what that is. Wi-Fi connection. I don't know how solid that is, but anyway, uh, this takes patience, and um, you just have to, you know, practice it until uh, it starts coming easier. Um, certainly took me a while. At least uh, six months. Before I finally figure out how to do this without help. Um, the railgun I'm not using yet, and that's because of what was after this part, which you'll get to see next. I'm just gonna take this guy here. Yeah, but like I was saying before, Chicago's a great city. I live in Florida. Um, I was actually expecting it to be really cold. Pack the uh, sweater, pack the scarf, got all my warm gear with me down to Florida, and only to realize once I got here it's just as warm as it is in Florida. So, you know, this time of year it, it's quite nice in Chicago. Uh, met a friendly cab driver at the airport, and he drive me all this way out of here. It's it is, it's true what they say about Chicago, it's, uh, it's got that Midwestern mentality. Anyway, not quite sure how we got on that topic, holy crap. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you, you want to avoid that if possible. You, you don't want to let these guys surround you and overwhelm you. So we're just going to... So we've got another minute and 33 seconds we have to stay in the sector. So we'll go ahead and pick up 
one of these pieces of scrap here. And uh, don't worry about running out of time because if the timer does run out uh, before you kill two bots, uh, you uh, you just have to uh, kill them at your leisure. You don't have to worry about killing them before the timer runs out. Really, the main thing to focus on is uh, that technique I touched on of uh, slow circle and then just focusing on one bot at a time. And with that you can see even though you're facing a lot of assaults all at once, as long as you don't let them surround you, it's really uh, quite manageable. Um, so we've actually completed the objectives here, we're just uh, waiting for the timer to tell us when it's time to move on to the next stage. If you're wondering uh, how I'm uh, controlling a ship, I'm using a gamepad controller. I actually brought it with me. Uh, it's a Logitech gamepad controller. Uh, it's got two thumbsticks. And, uh, I like this method of control because uh, I grew up playing video games. And it's just uh, second nature to me. But uh, there's a lot of different ways you can control your ship. And that online, you can use the mouse, you can use joysticks, trackpad, keyboard. If you're on Android, you can use accelerometer, steering. It's uh, quite nice. Okay, so this is the most difficult part of the mission. Um, I want to be light as possible, and I only need one scrap, actually. I could just dump these both and come back to it, but... Uh, we'll dump one scrap now. It's a little bit lighter. Okay, so we've got to kill in this stage one guardian and one assault. And we've got to do it uh, without dying or leaving a sector. You can see there's a queen off in the distance. This queen is going to attack us with her weapons. We better get too close. And we have this group of guardians coming at us along with the assaults. So that's a lot of bots all at once. We're going to try to, we're not going to worry too much about uh, maybe just put down a little defensive fire. The main thing will be to try to keep them all in the same area, relatively speaking. And that's so that they don't overwhelm us. Hopefully the uh, latency doesn't become too big of a problem. Alright, so first I'm going to take down one of these um, guardians here. And uh, to do that, uh, I will be using the railgun. That's why we brought the railgun. If you are using multi-aim, Remember that um, the faster the velocity of the weapon, the closer the targeting reticule will be to the target. So, to use the railgun to snipe this guardian, we are going to be aiming for the red. This does kind of push my skill. This, this is definitely, uh, it's not an easy mission. So I'm attempting to focus while sniping this card. Just to uh, get some of its health down. Waste the shots. And it's just a slow sort of ballet. Let's 
kind of like bronze, actually. Don't get too close, just throw in a little bit of backward acceleration. Using physics mode, look at this. And so it continues. One shot. So this is really where having a hunter's patience will serve you well. Don't worry too much about your health. Two, and you can hit. Claw, just like tray, water, and you put the water, then the water spills. That which you focus on is what you attract. And so it continues. Kind of reminds me of a uh, light show. And you might be looking at this thinking, oh my gosh, this is just insane. How could there be this many bots? You can see I'm actually doing an okay job with keeping it all together. Uh, my health is a little lower than I would like it to be right now, but uh, as long as I don't make any crucial mistakes, I think we should be there. Okay. Again, remember what I said about backwards acceleration. It also helps if you think of the bots as a uh, cluster of us as a single entity, and that's really not too far off the mark, because the same AI code is governing all the bots in the group, so they really do function to an extent like a single living organism, almost like that uh, computer simulation void. But you can see they are quite clever. Seemingly so. They're actually pretty good. But a lot of them together and they start behaving in patterns. And those patterns can be quite difficult to deal with. But by this point, you should have some idea of what you've got to do. We are out of rails, so we have to get a little bit closer. folks. Bottom of the ninth. Bases are loaded. He is separating. Will he do it? Will he be a success? Does it even matter? Hmm. Yes, indeed. This kind of reminds me of that time I was up on Crystal Beach. The snowstorm. Let us mosey on over this way. Together. Kadonk. Yes, indeed. Yes. My goodness. Oh, my goodness, you bots are nuts. What are you doing to me? 17% health, no I say, no, you 
are not superior. Your AI programming will not avail you. I will prevail. I am not afraid of your blue spheres of plasma, nor your green. I must remain focused. I must prevail. I cannot lose. I cannot lose, I say. That's it, folks. That is how we do it. So, side relief. And let's just follow the nav route back to uh, D14 here. So, I'll show you what happens next. It's uh, really just a uh, closing to the story, and that is when you get a super light. Gone through all that hell, so now uh, claim our reward. High risk courier needed. We'll just accept this mission here. Continue a few times. Go to our ship tab, and there she is, Centurion Superlight. Thanks for watching.